one of the things we like to do at Monaco is to be kind of transatlantic, and so we now will shift to this side of the ocean, although actually these guys are on both sides of the ocean from Big Point. This is Nils and, I'm sorry, and Simon Guild. Okay. They are, another thing we do is we mix up media, and the media we are now going to move into is online gaming. And Big Point is probably the biggest online gaming company that you might never have heard of. I think they're even bigger, for instance, in fact, one of the things I neglected to say at the beginning was that last year on the same stage at the same time, we had a company called Playfish, which some of you may have noticed was sold for around $400 million last week at the same time as another company that was up here last year, uh, uh, AdMob, went for even more to our friends from Google. So I think Joe Schorndorf from Axel Partners, who just happened to have a piece of both companies, was right in his optimism. I remember last year we were very gloomy here, and Joe came up here and said, don't worry about it, gloom is when things happen, and Joe was right. And Joe had put his money where his mouth was, and so Joe now is drinking champagne, and good for him. Anyway. So these guys are in the same kind of space that Playfish was, and so I'm just going to let them run through their thing, and we'll do the same thing. We'll ask questions afterwards, and go for it. Thanks. Good morning. Um, my name's Simon Guild. I am the chairman of Big Point. Um, I'm just going to introduce this very quickly by saying, in a prior life, uh, I used to be the chief executive of MTV Networks Europe, and uh, people ask me what I'm doing nowadays in the games business, and I say the games business feels to me like cable television felt back in the early 90s. It's a place where there's a lot of really exciting, both commercial and creative things going on, which we're going to try and describe this morning. Now, one of the big differences between, uh, there are many big differences between MTV and what we do at Big Point, is MTV is consumed in small 60 second pieces. Trying to describe, play a game, one of our games in 60 seconds is not actually possible because people are in there for several hours. So what we're not going to do is we're not going to do a demo of this thing because we don't have several hours to show it to you. We're going to try and describe this to you in five slides and give you five things to take away about why you should have heard of us, why in a year's time Spencer hopefully will be standing up here talking about us having sold ourselves for an even larger amount of money than the numbers you've just heard. Niels. So, good morning. My name is Niels Henning. I try right now, I think I have four or three and a half minutes left. So I try to give you a fast overview about what we are. Generally, the question, who are Big Point? And I can tell you, I think we are bigger than you actually think. And we heard in the morning, um, or we heard just right now, there was a company acquired by Electronic Arts by valuation of $400 million. But I can tell you so far, we are not Playfish. We are bigger. And um, what we are, in fact, we are browser-based video games. That means we are in a very strong niche in between the hardcore games and the casual games. A, a big market space um, where we feel kind of no competition at the moment. I show you right now a game or a short trailer of a game that you see what's really possible to, to create nowadays in, in the browser. I don't know how many of you have experience with, with console games or saw console games. The game I show you is just running in the browser. No download, no installation. You can access the game from the internet, from the university, from work, wherever you are, and you have an internet connection enabled. And all games, everything what you see, as I said, you just come into the game, you play the game. No download, no installation. The principle works very simple. Everything you do is um, free to play. We, we bring a huge community together, and in the final end, about 10% of our users decide to spend some money, buy bigger cars, better guns, better equipment, better dress, and um, this makes the business bigger than the Playfish business. There's also one very important thing about Big Point, and um, probably you know that the social gaming companies are in fact depending on one distribution partner, a company called Facebook, who did a wonderful job. But of course, if you depend on one partner, it brings a big risk. When you have a look at Big Point and our distribution model, you will see that we are integrated in most of the broadcasters you actually know. When you go to their gaming section, you'll find our games. These games are promoted by the broadcasters on air with on-air spots to drive traffic to the games. And if you have a look, probably a couple of our partners or representatives of the partners are even sitting here in the audience. The business model we are going for 
is not ad sales driven, is not subscription driven. We think it's the smartest and most valuable business model at all. It's based on item selling, based on microtransactions, that, <clears throat> that enables us that we always have the best pricing point. We attract users who don't have money, who spend time on our sites. We have users who are willing to spend five or ten dollars, and we have other users who spend in our games a couple of hundred dollars or even thousands of dollars a month because they have the money and they're bored. And in the final end, it means um, we generate more money per paying user than actually a World of Warcraft from Activision Blizzard is doing it. What's our target as a last point? Uh, we are targeting to be soon the world's largest gaming portal. Here you see the development of our investors right now, NBC Universal. Um, is invested with, with the Peacock Fund into Big Point. Another investment, investor is the GMT, um, um, GMT Communication Partners. At the moment, we are already, in terms of traffic, the third biggest gaming portal in the world, and we target to be the number one next year. Here are some facts that you can read on the chart. We have more than 90 million users in our games. We, have, we grow every day by 250,000 registrations not social registrations where you just click on it, really registrations where people come to the game, register and play the game. We have more than 300 people, and if you want to know more about Big Point, the company itself, Simon and I, we are here, and we are very happy to, to open and answer all your questions. Thanks. Why don't you guys come over here and let them do the swap? Um, I had a couple questions. Um, usage, do you, what, what can you tell us about the average user Use per day, what times a day? What, what do you, are they in the office or are they waiting till they get home? In, ah, sorry. In, in fact, we even see a, a strong peak in, in the office break times, I must say. So between uh, 12 and, and 2 p.m., we have a peak in traffic and people are using it. Yeah. In fact, an average session in our games is about 25 minutes. Now, the ga casual, do you guys like the term casual gaming? Is that. We, we think that we make serious games. I also know Christian from, from Playfish quite well, and what he's saying, he's creating a kind of application to entertain um, a kind of community or kind of uh, um, network of friends. What we are doing, we are making real games. It's a difference. So you don't, you don't mind that term? Well, we are something different. It's social gaming. It's more interacting, well, entertaining. No, no, what, what about ca so casual, social? Those are they yeah. separate? Casual MMOs, you can say. Uh, okay. I think there's a big difference in making real video games. What you saw and making a can a I can I bill. can I sit in my house and play on a game simultaneously with my friend down the street, and we're it, both in the same. Definitely, you even play against thousands or hundreds of thousands of other players so, at the same time. Okay, it's got worldwide. all those all those features. Exactly, and it's free. It's free to play. Okay, but if you really like it, you will pay. And what? Okay, and back back to back to the usage. I mean, so are people spending minutes a day, hours a day? What's the? As I said, the, the average session time is about 25 minutes when someone is inside of the game. And you can say that our active users have minimum two logins a week. Two a week. So okay. So as, as an hour a week then is. is it depends. It's an average, you know, okay. an average on, on an active user base of, of more think, than ten. Do you think? Are you are you competing with? Who are you competing with? Are you competing with game guys, television? What's the? In fact, what we do, we don't compete with with television. We found a new way for television to be to build up a new vertical yeah, revenue saw, stream. How how does it work? How does a television network integrate? What, what, what they do, um, in general, all the, the big broadcasters, they saw a big problem out of platforms like YouTube, for example, and they saw the, the, the media or their audience is shifting towards online. So it was a challenge to establish something that's sticky for the user that brings the user back to TV. And they integrated games on their websites, and with these games, the users remain coming. Is there. the idea that they're using it through a, a set-top box, or are they doing it separately on a laptop while... It's at the, at the moment, in most of the cases, they're accessing the games through their computers. Uh, but in fact, as I said, what we do with our games, our games are enabled to be accessed with any device that's, that has an online access. Okay. What we do right now, in fact, we are talking with all the big OEMs, also from the, from the TV productions or manu manufacturing side of, of uh, the, the OEM machines, right. so the big TV screens that they pre-install our games for the future when the TVs will be uh, internet en enabled. What kind of advertisers is it? Are, is the general run? Well, you, I saw you have in-game, you have... Yeah. 
I used to make a joke when I was asked the question about advertising. I said, um, we uh, have about well over a billion page views and we decided it wasn't actually worth selling advertising. So we've in fact stopped selling advertising entirely. We don't do any of it at all. It was on the slide though, I thought. Uh, no, I mean... We, we have still some little bit advertising on, on uh, the homepage of the portal, but not in the games anymore. And we realized advertising is for us peanuts. We make about 1% uh, of our revenues out of advertising. So, um, so it wasn't worth the trouble. We think in terms of advertising, it's better to deliver the user a great gaming experience, not disturb him. He wants to play a game. He doesn't want to see an ad. No. Is, that, is that an industry trend? Is that... I'm, I'm sure it's an industry trend if you create games where users are willing to pay for. If, if, you, if you build the, the games in the right quality, then you, then you are not depending on advertising. And this is, in fact, what, what the broadcasters like, that they have a new revenue stream inside of, um, in, inside of their portfolio um, that's not depending on any ad sales. So, in fact, we were the big winner of the financial crisis and, and the breakdown of the ad advertising market. Um, does anybody out... Any questions from the floor? We're having a little technical thing, so we're having a... Are you guys going to be okay? Okay? All set. Then that's it. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, too. Okay, and I need the mic back. Thank you, Simon.